Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about myopia progression and axial length and wait, what? What is that? Before I do, let's talk to you about how you can connect with us. If you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, that's okay. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. You can read stories about successes that we've had with our vision patients. You can read about things that we do at our clinic. You can take a quiz and you can schedule a consultation. All right, so what's axial length? What's that have anything to do with myopia and what's going on with this case? So we have this 12 year old patient who came to us with concerns. Her mom had great concerns about her axial length, which is the length of the eye elongating a lot over the course of a couple of years. In conjunction with that, she was also getting more and more nearsighted and mom was very worried about that. Well, let's establish a few things first of all. What's a normal axial length of the eye at age 12? Well, typically 24.06, give or take, this is the part that gets a little confusing, give or take 1.10. That's a lot. So there's a huge amount of fudge factor in that 24.06 that's normal for a girl at 12 years of age. You can actually go online and find a normative table for how old you are, whether you're male or female, and it will tell you what the axial length of your eye should be, but it's going to say plus or minus, so give or take however much could be that little fudge factor. So we've got this child who has had an increase for years before coming to us of approximately 2. Point, excuse me, 0.27 to 0.31 every single year of a progression. If we kind of halved that, we said, okay, well, what is it over six months of a time frame? Well, just divide out 0.27 and we've got like 0.135. And if we take 0.31, well, we've got approximately 0.155 is what it was averaging every six months. So at the time that she started with us, she was also a minus six and a minus 575 with 275 in astigmatism. Now bear in mind, astigmatism means that the shape of the eye, so her left eye, was somewhat flattened out rather than being spherical and one focal point hitting the back of the eye a flattened eye will have two focal points one for that flattened out meridian and one for the other meridian so what do we do to try to make it more normal for the person and then not to have two images that are stretched weird well we give them a lens that has a component opposite of where their eye is flattened so if the cornea is flattened here, then we give a correcting cylinder um, axis on the opposite meridian to almost effectively make that eye like a sphere again. <laughs> really what it does is it takes the focal point back to normal for it hitting the back of the retina so that you can see things as a single image as opposed to having images that are, you know, an image is like split and kind of drawn out to the side, if you will, or more oblique. So. That's astigmatism. She had quite a bit. And because of that high amount of astigmatism in the left eye, she was only capable of seeing about 2050 with this eye. Her right eye, however, was a little bit better. She was able to see 2030 with it. So let's see what happens if we interject and we start working with this patient to try to work on the axial length and get it to either stop growing so much we don't want it to grow by 0.27 or 0.31 every year because that's a lot. And that's putting a lot of stress and strain on the back of the eye or the retina, which is a thin membrane that's a neuroprocessing membrane of the back of the eye and allows the eye to process images and see things. And so if that happens to snap and break or tear or detach because the pressure on that eye from elongating is so strong, that's not a great situation and requires surgery and hopefully we can recover the retina and the eyesight. 
So instead, if we can try to slow and halt the progression of myopia, slow and halt the progression of the axial length, or even kind of take things backwards, that's where we want to be. That is optimal. So let's start from the point of where we interjected and started working with this patient and we began working to decrease her myopia and improve her eyesight and slow down that axial length. Let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, her eyesight improved from 2030 to 2025 and starting to read on the 2020 line. Second of all, the same thing happened here with this eye. So it went from 2050 down to 2025, and she started to see on the 2020 line. All right, eyesight's better. We got that out of the way. Now let's look at that axial length, with, which is another huge factor of concern because again, we're growing by 0.27 and 0.31 millimeters every single year, or approximately um, 0.135 and 0.155 every six months. Can we actually do anything to reduce that? Well, with treatment, what we noticed in the span of approximately six months was instead of it increasing by 0.135 and 0.155, which had been the average over many years, dating back to 2020 for this little girl, and now we got a hold of her and we started working with her. Now we're seeing a progression of only 0.07, so about half of what we were seeing progress every six months for the right eye. And this one progressed by 0 0.03. So about a fourth, maybe even about a fifth of a re, you know amount of progression for this eye in comparison to what it was progressing every six months. I'll take that all day long, every day, okay? We still have a progression in this eye a little bit more than what I want to see. A normal progression year over year is somewhere going to be around about a 0 0.04 to 0 0.05 or 6, although we don't really want to see it progress that much. We want to see less of a pro progression. So that 0 0.07 for me in six months time frame, I want to see that go back down towards more like that 0 0.03. Over time, if that's going on 0 0.03 in the span of six months, and it's a 0 0.06 in the span of a year, that's a fairly normal progression for myopia. That equates to about a quarter or so of a notch of an increase in myopia in a year's time frame, where something like a 0 0.27 increase and a 0 0.31 increase is going to mean there's a lot more myopia progressing. And that's not normal and that's not what we want to see. Again, what does that do and why do, Why is it not normal? Why do we not want to see that? Well, because it puts stress and pressure on the back of the eye on that retina, which is a thinner membrane. We don't want it to snap, tear, or break. And that equates to maybe a potential of loss of vision if that happens and we can't get surgery to correct it right away. So how on earth are we doing this? How does it work in the first place to be able to improve eyesight and decrease something like the axial lengths progression every six months? Well, what we're doing in our program is electrically stimulating the brain and the focusing center within the eye. There's a muscle that works on the lens of the eye called the ciliary muscle, and it contracts and it kind of relaxes. So all day long, as we shift our focus from one distance to another, that muscle is in action, either contracting or relaxing. It is that action of contracting and relaxing that causes the eye to elongate and then shift back. Over time though, if that eye is so much in this realm of contracting and having to focus really hard, then what happens is, is that I think about it like a rubber band theory. I wish I had a rubber band in front of me, but if you pulled on that rubber band and pulled on it and pulled on it and pulled on it, over time you would break down some of the tensile strength of that rubber band, even a balloon that you blow up and you blow it up and you blow it up again and again and again. Eventually the walls of that balloon thin out and it gets easier to blow that up. And that rubber band, not as hard to pull apart, it gets easier and easier as you break that down. So the eye itself over time of lots of contraction, lots of focusing, will just tend to elongate and elongate. So if we can reduce that 
by teaching the brain effectively how to focus better and how this ciliary muscle needs to act and how to take breaks and relax the focusing system, then we can effectively stop, maybe even reverse some of the myopia and stop in its tracks this axial length progression that's year over year or every six months too much. So in this particular case, going from a 0.27 and a 0.31 progression in the span of a year to being on track for half of that with this right eye and one fifth of that for the left eye, I'm completely happy with that. I want to also see that that right eye gets to the point where it's, you know, increasing similarly to what we see over here with this left eye, which would be only about a fifth of the progression that we were seeing for a number of years before we intervened. Now, the other thing is, let's throw in one more complication to this case. This person was also using MySight, which is a contact lens that is designed to reduce the amount of focusing the eye has to go through by giving a little bit of a plus or magnification in the lens. And it's meant to slow down this progression of myopia, but also the progression of the axial length changing. And what we saw during the time that the patient was using my site before our program was that we went from a 0.27 um, progression to a 0.24 progression with my site and from a 0.31 to a 0.28 progression. Not a lot of a change. So really not a significant improvement with just the my site alone, which is why the family reached out to us to say, hey, can you help us get this under control? And we did thankfully. So I'm excited to see where this progresses moving forward and continuing to kind of go down the same path. What are we going to see in another six, eight months to a year from now? Can we keep it at this level of progression, which is very little because that's where we want to be. It's kind of a sweet spot. Now, if you or someone that you know has myopia and there's concerns about the myopia increasing or the axial length increasing, give us a call because we do have a proven track record of helping patients with this. This is not our only case, but what it does require is that the person is willing to have that axial length measured with a, an ultrasound, a specific ultrasound of the eye on a regular basis so we can measure and match and see how is this progressing and then kind of feed those numbers back to us so we can take a look to see, well, how is this progressing and how are we slowing it down? So if that's you again, give us a call at 618-288-1489. If you're not local to us, that's okay. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com where you can next step, most important step, your action step, schedule a consultation to find out how we can help you. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss notifications of all of our videos. As always, if you also think this would be helpful for someone that you know, who may be their child, maybe it's like a niece or a nephew or a grandkid is, you know, progressing and you're concerned, pass this video on because they could get help. Thank you.